2019, actor Keanu Reeves was a guest on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. While the segment was to promote the upcoming Bill and Ted 3 movie, the conversation took a most interesting turn, literally in the last 30 seconds of the program. What happens when we die? Stephen Colbert asked in a lighthearted, almost rhetorical note, to which Keanu, known for being a few words, paused and said, I know that the ones who love us will miss us. A most profound thought, proving his reputation as a down-to-earth, everyday kind of guy who has perhaps not been tarnished by the glamour of Hollywood. Before I go further, if I may suggest the content in this episode is intended for ages 10 and higher. The importance of this conversation is more relevant than it ever has been, but perhaps the subject matter would be best with the younger ones when you feel it is appropriate, and, in a way, you feel that they would understand. So if that is the case, and you would rather listen to this at a later time, please do so. If they are over 10, they may be old enough to be involved in the dialogue, as you'll see in just a bit. Some details surprised even me. September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, specifically September 10th, which is today. This is a special episode. My intention with Calm It Down is to be light, encouraging, hopeful, and to be honest, positive. We have enough negative things, especially this year. Though I've always considered myself a blue sky kind of guy, and while this is definitely the case, my hope is to get into the thick of life with you, to be real, to speak openly about struggles, to speak openly about setbacks. Only then can we begin to make a difference, not only in our lives, but the lives of others. And in regards to suicide, some conversations are simply too important to turn on the sunshine and pretend it doesn't exist, because it does. And while most episodes of Calm It Down podcast are half story, half visual techniques and guidance, this episode is a little different. Every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide around the world. I want to say that one more time. Every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide around the world. In the U.S. alone, that's 132 a day. Nearly 50,000 died by suicide as it's the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 34. It's difficult to not weep in my reading this. These are numbers from 2018. Goodness knows what the data from 2020 will detail. I want to be incredibly upfront about something. I don't have the answers. I don't. I wish I did. I have some ideas and tools that I have learned along the way, but if you are struggling to the point where you no longer feel as if you have an out, please write down this number, stop this episode, and call. There are so many people that are literally sitting by a phone, staring at it, hoping, wishing you will call. That is 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-TALK. Or you can even text BC2M. That's the letters B, C, the number 2, and the letter M to 741-741. Please, this is far more important than a podcast episode. The Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is one of the most recognized places for suicide attempts, roughly one every two weeks. Of the countless that have died by suicide, at least 29 have survived. And the most interesting note 
is they all had one thing in common. As soon as they jumped, they regretted their decision. One person describing in detail, I thought, what am I doing? This was the worst thing I could do in my life. I thought of my wife and daughter. I did not want to die. I wanted to live. Everything in my life that I thought was unfixable was totally fixable, except for having just jumped. Those words, those key words, I didn't want to die. Over one million Americans attempt suicide each year. That's over one million families in the U.S. that go through this together. So when I say you're not alone, you're not alone. Just as much as you are internally screaming for help, there are so many more wanting to hear you, embrace you, help you. And this is why these conversations are so important. Mental health, and particularly suicide, has been downgraded and only recognized when signs are evident that someone needs help. The approach has been reactive rather than proactive. We know countless proactive measures such as exercise, eating right, and proper rest helps prevent anything from heart disease to obesity. It's only when we notice someone being withdrawn or giving away possessions or talking about death until we suddenly realize, oh, that person may need help. Proactive, reactive. So how do we help? Where do we even begin? Timothy Lawson, no relation by the way, but I do like his choice in surnames, is a Marine Corps veteran and suicide awareness advocate, and most importantly, a survivor of his own suicide attempt. He shares four key elements that I believe are great starting points in this conversation as we continue this path together. The first being empathy. It seems so simple. Oddly enough, it's so simple, it's simple. Empathy, understanding and sharing the feelings of another. That's it. Looking at someone and saying, what are they going through? If their life is crap, help them. If their life is amazing, dance with them. This isn't a time to build walls or to distance ourselves based on opinions. Extend the hand and say, I can probably learn a lot from you, no matter the differences. And I believe you'll see once we begin to pay attention to the lives of others, you'll be surprised how many are going through difficult circumstances. But we're either in a rush to get somewhere else, or our noses are buried in a touchscreen, or we simply have what we believe to be too many varying opinions. If we really want to begin touching the lives of those one million each year, we have to invest into the lives of one person at a time. The next thing was purpose. How amazing is it when someone suggests your name for a talent or skill that you possess? It makes you feel recognized. It motivates you. It makes you feel wanted. We all love the feeling of being wanted. You feel like you have a place in this world. Think of three people that you are close to. What do those three people have in their lives that you may not possess? Are there ways for you to share their talents, their purpose with others? Imagine their face on the other end of the line hearing that you had recommended them. The third element being mentoring. Countless businessmen and businesswomen often speak of the impact mentors or coaches have had in their careers. Those fundamental steps shaped by someone else taking the time to show them what steps to take and what steps to avoid. Find one person whose life you can sow into. What is so great about mentoring is that it is a two-way street. The mentor, you, are experiencing that sense of purpose, while the mentee is experiencing empathy from the mentor. And finally, number four, telling someone they matter. When all is said and done, telling someone they matter is important. 
showing someone they matter is life-giving. I'm trying to practice this in my own life, and I must confess it is not easy. In full transparency, it's the most difficult task that I struggle with. It's not that I don't love my wife, or my kids, or my family, but am I showing them that I love them, not just telling them? Am I marking blocks on the counter and saying, nope, that time is taken? It's difficult, particularly for those of us working at home, juggling a multitude of fires, burning the candle at both ends. But what your kids or close friends see aren't the hours of you toiling, it's the memories of the undivided moments where they are the center of your world. Remember, find a life who you can sow into. Tell them, show them they matter. I go back to Mr. Reeves' weighty words of wisdom. I know that the ones who love us will miss us. Don't miss them while they are standing right in front of you. Tell them, as if their life depends on it, because it does. They matter, and the void of their life in yours would be irreplaceable beyond measure. I cannot stress the importance of this conversation in raising the awareness of suicide prevention, but what I do have is a sincere hope to bring this conversation from the hushed shadows to the dinner tables of our homes. It is far too important to ignore. I have a list of further resources and additional support at cometdownpodcast.com. We're at the end of this episode. I'm going to repeat that number one more time. 1-800-273-TALK or text BC2M to 741-741. Right now, someone is staring at that phone waiting to hear. To hear more episodes of Calm It Down or the musical playlist from today's episode, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community at our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. For what it's worth, the views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and are not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you and you should act only upon the advice of such physician. In short, I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs and simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals and additional resources, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. You can hear Comet Down every Tuesday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you may fancy. And wherever that may be, do subscribe. If anything, it will at least remind you what day of the week it is. For more information, visit CometDownPodcast.com. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come, as every little bit helps us in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. Until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.